Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and I'm on my webcam to introduce the video you're about to see because something happened while I was editing this video uh, and that thing that happened was that I got banned from the FameBit platform. I've had an account on there for a while. I uh, recall that FameBit was the company that wanted to pay me uh, $250 to do a favorable review of the Ring doorbell uh, and I asked them some questions about it that apparently they didn't like and they have banned me even before this video got posted. So uh, if in, you know, any press or whatever comes out of this video, uh, the fact is that I was banned uh, before whatever I talked about here even made it to YouTube. So apparently if uh, they don't like what you're asking them, they're going to kick you off their platform completely. And that's what happened here. You can get the full context now in the full video, which begins right now. Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're going to be interrupting our regularly scheduled review for tonight uh, to do a follow-up on uh, FameBit and the Ring Doorbell. So if you saw my Ring Doorbell review, I talked about how uh, FameBit approached me on Ring's behalf uh, asking me to do a positive review for $250 of the Ring Doorbell. That's something that I refused to do. Uh, the one that I reviewed, I ended up buying myself because I needed a doorbell. You can watch the review and see a little bit more about what that product is all about. And I wanted to tell their side of the story because both FameBit and Ring uh, reached out to me, kind of contradicting each other a little bit, which is interesting. Uh, but also just to bring this issue up of paid reviews on the internet because it's been bugging me for a long time. There's a whole industry springing up around this thing and I just want people to be aware of, first of all, what the law is, at least here in the United States. Many other countries have similar laws. Uh, and also just, you know, a basic practice of ethics that I think all creators should be following uh, because, you know, consumers are coming to us for advice. And uh, even if I'm not acting uh, in a bad way, uh, the actions of others end up reflecting on me because of the medium and platform that I choose to be on. And that is something that has really been bugging me a lot lately. So we're going to talk about uh, all of that in this video. So let me recap for you, uh, first of all, what this is all about. So uh, last February, I got an email from FameBit. And what they are, as you can see, in the email here uh, is a self-serve ad platform where uh, brands can go on this thing, uh, post up things that they want videos of, and uh, offer money to creators to do those videos. And in many ways, this is kind of a neat concept because it gives an opportunity for smaller YouTube channels to have uh, some revenue flow beyond just relying on YouTube ad revenue. And in many cases, they're going to pay you a good amount of money for a placement of some kind. And this is not evil in in of itself because I think people should be allowed to do sponsorship content on their channels. I think even small channels have tremendous reach based on search engines and everything else that they should be allowed to uh, make money if they choose. However, it's the way these things have been uh, pitched lately that is of concern to me. So let me read this email. Well, I'm going to read the whole thing to you, but you can see for yourself here what this email says. But basically what they wanted me to do uh, was to review the product in my home and they were going to pay me $250 to do it. Now, a product review is very different from a placement or an advertisement because a review by the nature of what a consumer might might see looking for information on a product is something that uh, should not come in with somebody paying you to uh, tilt your uh, your opinion of that product in one way or the other. So that's why I don't take money for reviews. And uh, I think it's very important if you're going to call something a review that you're not being paid to do it. Uh, and if you are being paid to do it, then it's an advertisement or an endorsement, not a review. So I responded back to this person here. You can see what I wrote back. I said, thanks for reaching out. Uh, it's not ethical for me to take compensation from a manufacturer in exchange for a positive review. I'm happy to review the product provided I don't have to drill a hole in my house to test it. Now, I did buy it and drill the hole in my house anyhow, but um, you can see here I wrote back to her and said, look, I, I'm just not interested in taking the money. If you want to send the product over for me to review, happy to do it. Just not going to guarantee you that it's going to be positive or, or all positive uh, if the product is not good. Uh, so she wrote back and said, Hey, Lon, thanks for your reply. Unfortunately, this campaign, the client would need a video with a positive review. And that completely turned me off from this product for almost a year until I started seeing people who I uh, know and trust buying these things and talking favorably about them. And the fact that I needed a doorbell made sense for me maybe to give this product a shot and share my feelings with it with you. And you can check out the review to see uh, all of that there. So now I, I started my video review off with this little thing because uh, a couple of months ago when I took a sponsor on the channel, uh, some people were concerned about the direction my channel might take you know, for having a sponsor on the channel. And I made a pretty long video talking about why I need to take sponsorship, how I'm going to take it, the standards that I'm going to apply to it. And I used this as an example of the things that I wouldn't do on the channel. So I felt like if I'm going to review the Ring doorbell, I need to bring this up so that those of you who have been following me for a while uh, know that this was not me finally giving in and taking $250 to review the product. So that's why that was put in 
into the review in the first place. So just uh, get that context there. So uh, what happened is um, I got an email. Actually, I reached out to uh, Ring uh, this morning because Fainbit also emailed me last night about their side of the story. So I wanted to get Ring's side of the story. And I got an email here, a rather long one from Yassi Shamiri. So you can pause this and read the whole thing. Uh, but what I am going to do is uh, show you some portions of it that I think are the most relevant to our discussion here. So he says, we saw your Ring review video and we were extremely surprised and upset to read the email Fainbit had sent you and evidently other YouTube influencers. We as a company were completely unaware of the communications between Famebit and influencers, as well as Famebit's offer until we saw your video. We received no information regarding payments to the influences of their contracts. We simply work with Famebit to pick who we would like to work with. Now, I also asked him in my initial in email out to uh, Ring as to, did he review the content before it got posted to the creator's YouTube channels? Because that's often a requirement in these Famebit arrangements that the brand that's paying you gets to see what you're going to put up before you put it up. Uh, and, uh, and also, it's very important for brands to look at that content because they are responsible for making sure that those creators are are disclosing properly that they were compensated for those reviews. Uh, his response to that was to answer your question, yes, uh, Ring reviewed the content prior to it being posted. However, we were told to review the videos for its contents, uh, i.e. the video following our brand guidelines, is their information accurate in regards to the feature callouts and functionality, et cetera, and our impression of the video. I just wanted to reiterate that we did not know what they were paying influencers or told influencers prior to reviewing the content. And uh, he's not telling me who told him those were the things to review. So I'm assuming Famebit uh, had that be what they should be looking at in the course of uh, reviewing content prior to posting. However, as a brand, they should have known that it's also important to look at disclosures that the creator is making uh, on those videos too as to whether or not they were compensated. Uh, he also continues to say here, moreover, we did not reach out to Famebit directly requesting Requesting quote unquote reviews, we asked Famebit to help us connect to influencers of all kinds in order to help market ring on different platforms. This was his grammatical error there. We actually asked for a mix of videos, not just reviews, including unboxings. When working for a professional vendor like Famebit, we expect them to disclose all necessary information to the parties involved, including us, which they clearly failed to do. This is an expectation of professionalism we hold with well-established vendors such as Famebit, and it's unfortunate to see that they did not act in a way uh, when rep act in that way when representing us as a brand. And they finished off here by saying, "We do not require all reviews be positive, and we never require positive reviews in exchange for Ring doorbell units." whether it's with YouTube influencers or mainstream reporters. So uh, that is Ring's side of the story. Uh, I found the communications, the longer the explanation, you saw how long his email was, the more you have to explain. Uh, clearly there was, it was an arrangement here between Famebit and Ring, and perhaps at least from Ring's side of the story here is that they were not fully aware of what Famebit was doing on their behalf. There's no way to prove whether or not this is true or not, but we're gonna have to take their word for it. That's what they say is their side of the story. So what does Famebit say? Let's take a look and see what they emailed me. This one came in around midnight last night. I got it around 1 a.m. Uh, and then it kept me up half the night doing research here. So Adam Hendel, uh, who's the community person over at uh, Famebit, uh, reached out to me here. So this is his email. I'm gonna pull out just a couple of things in his email that were most relevant. Uh, he says, however, I hope you can understand that a brand would not be able to pay a creator to do a negative review of a product. He continues to say, if an influencer receives a product and is not happy with it, we are happy for you to keep the product and simply ask to not post any review at all. So in other words, uh, censor yourself because you know, you're know you not gonna be posting anything uh, Famebit sent you if you have something bad to say about the product. So this clearly contradicts what Ring was telling me as far as what their policy was versus the policy of the company uh, that they contracted with to reach out to influencers. So it's a, you know, who knows? I mean, Famebit is saying something different than what uh, Ring is telling us. Famebit says we don't let people post negative reviews. Uh, Ring says we'd be happy to let them do it. So what does that mean? Who knows? Maybe if I reached out to Ring directly and they had sent me a doorbell and I reviewed it and thought it was crappy, uh, they wouldn't have a problem with me making a negative review. But uh, from the way that Famebit approached influencers here, it's clear that uh, that was the requirement that it had to be positive and we were going to pay, they were going to pay you uh, for that positive review. So 
that's what it is. I mean, this is both sides of the story. Uh, you know what I'm, where I'm at on this, and that is pretty much what we have here. So I want to do a little bit more background here, though, and just show you what uh, some of the many reviews that are out there of the Ring Door. But we're not going to watch any videos here, but this is just a representative sampling of uh, the first uh, page or two of YouTube search results on Ring Doorbell reviews. You'll see mine on there and a bunch of others. Uh, very few, in fact, only two that I could find uh, actually disclosed that they were part of this FameBit deal. Uh, one video put it in the description of their video, but never mentioned it in the video itself. Uh, another one actually did it properly where uh, he said at the outset, and you'll see, you'll see him in a minute, that he got money and he got the doorbell and everything else. A few of them actually said they got the doorbell from Ring but didn't mention the compensation. And because FameBit and Ring are not disclosing to me the uh, list of YouTubers that were part of this deal, we're never going to know who was part of it and who wasn't. So it's not going to be fair to speculate. But what I did do uh, was reach out to a bunch of YouTubers who had reviewed this product around the time that I was uh, offered the, uh, the FameBit deal. Uh, not many of them got back to me as you could probably imagine because oftentimes in these contracts they're under an NDA not to disclose the terms of it and everything else which is another problem uh, but one of them did write back to me under uh, you know kind of off the record but I can verify that this is a legit uh, creator that got the deal uh, and he said to me yes I took the deal I got the money I didn't disclose it in my video and he said you know sometimes he just forgets to do it or you know whatever it is in the course of the review it was a while ago he wasn't sure exactly what went on now I did ask him whether or not uh, FameBit or Ring had uh, asked him to make those disclosures that he was paid uh, to do the review. He didn't recall as to whether or not they did. He didn't think so, but again, we can't really speculate because he really wasn't sure. He does so many of these things. He says it doesn't really know one way or the other, so uh, we're not going to speculate there. But I do want to talk about what you are required to do as a creator, but also as a brand. So the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, uh, here in the United States actually has some regulatory authority uh, over the kinds of things that this little incident uh, creates. So basically what happens is, is that me as a creator, if somebody sends something to the channel to review, I have to say that, you know, so-and-so sent this product for me to review. Now I go a little bit further sometimes and actually disclose when I buy something versus when it's sent to the show. In fact, I think I'm actually going to get more uh, detailed in exactly what these arrangements are because I'm, they're, they're, they're revising them uh, constantly and there's a, a greater amount of detail that's expected from creators now according to the Federal Trade Commission. Now what's interesting though is that if I were to violate any of these terms of disclosure, it's not me that is uh, in violation of the law. It's actually the brand or the agency that was working with me to send me the product and or the money uh, for that video. And uh, it's on them to make sure that we, the creators, do that. Now, in many cases, when uh, things get sent to the show that they don't want back, a lot of times it's more of a logistical headache for the brand to get the thing back so they just have you keep it. But a lot of times what they do is send over a contract that I have to sign acknowledging that I need to disclose this in my video. Video, basically, you know, a legal document that I am committing to uh, disclosing this because they don't want to deal with the FTC coming after them. So it was surprising to hear that neither FameBit nor Ring responded to my question as to whether or not they advised these creators on the disclosures that they should be making uh, for these reviews because it's really important. It's the law and people can get in trouble for this. And you'll see in a minute somebody actually did. Now, one person did this correctly and uh, that's this guy. And I want to give him a good shout out here. I don't want to... Uh, I don't like going after YouTubers. I don't think that's the right thing for fellow creators to do to each other, but this guy I'm going after because he did the right thing. So Jordan Keyes, in his review of the Ring doorbell, not only stated that they sent him the doorbell for review, uh, but that they also were compensating him for it. And I think that is exactly what you should do when you take a deal like this is to say, Yes, I got the doorbell. Yes, they're paying me. And then you're fine. That's legal. It's legal for the brand. It's legal for the creator. And it's up to you as the creator to decide whether or not that's something your audience will find acceptable. Jordan's audience clearly does. And I'm happy that he's able to uh, find different ways to monetize his channel. And I tr truly and sincerely mean it. I don't know him at all. I just found his video and he was the only one out of the many that I watched uh, that actually disclosed things properly. And that is what you're supposed to do uh, so that consumers are fully aware of where you're coming from when they watched it. And you should also know that it is likely that FameBit and or Ring uh, likely reviewed that video before Jordan was permitted to post it under the contract. But that's part of the deal and he disclosed it. Many, many others did not. And that is really the problem that I have uh, with influencer marketing right now in general. So I want to show you a couple more things on the FameBit platform before we wrap this up. 
uh, you as a creator log into their platform and you're given a whole bunch of offers that are out there from different brands and you can sign up for the brand to with the brand to do whatever it is they're looking for and unfortunately on the Famebit platform here, a lot of these things are uh, being asked specifically for compensated reviews. So Canon of all companies, which is really disappointing actually to be asking for this kind of thing. Uh, they're giving you a lot of stuff here and they want a review for compensation. Now their compensation I think is the, the scanner uh, thing as well as a uh, new network attached storage device that they're making. I'm gonna buy this probably to review it because it looks interesting. But nevertheless, they are uh, on this platform asking for reviews and uh, either paying or giving you about 50 $1,500 worth of other stuff, including a camera, uh, to demonstrate how this works. And again, if the if the person receiving this stuff is disclosing it properly, perfectly fine. But we got a situation here where companies are asking for reviews, and uh, consumers have a different expectation of what a review is uh, versus an advertisement. And I think it's I, I just don't like this notion of being asking people to do reviews. You can even see here that the video types it's actually a, a category on Famebits platform that these are things that you can review. We got. Here, the phasier Bluetooth headphones. They want a review between 500 and 1,000 bucks a video. Uh, good, good bucks if you can get them. The Sun Jack, which is a heat bank that you can recharge your phone and warm your hands up. They want a review of that too. Um, this is just, this is just, just what's on the platform tonight. Another one here, Casetify wants a review for 100 to 250 dollars. So again, we're seeing things where uh, they're asking for a review and they're asking for money for that review. And I just don't think it's it's in the best interest of the consumers to continually call your review a review when you're being paid uh, to make that review. Uh, last one though is one I want to show you that's doing it properly and this is Kingston. So they're not asking for a review. In fact, if you look at the bottom of this page here, uh, we don't want reviews or unboxings. What they want is a, uh, you know, a tutorial and a mention with one of their products uh, showing why you might want to use a solid state drive versus something else. And this is fine. In fact, this is the kind of stuff that I uh, plan to be doing. I'm probably not going to go through Famebit to do it, but uh, this is the kind of stuff that, that I will be doing on the channel and have done on the channel where we're not doing a review of a product. Uh, we're showing the product in the context of a broader topic, something informative or you know, something that I think the audience can gain some value out of. And in the course of that, uh, you disclose that Kingston sponsored this video. They're compensating me for this review or this video. And here's the thing. And this is what we're going to do and blah, 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 blah. And off you go and you're fine. And this is the kind of stuff that I think is actually going to bring value to uh, YouTube and to Famebit and to many others, but uh, too many companies are falling into this trap of paying for the, exactly this review that they want, uh, which unfortunately uh, drags down the reputation of everybody else out there. So I think it's a, a big issue and I hope more companies go in the direction of Kingston, which is primarily why I'm making this video is for brands to watch this and uh, look at doing the things that Kingston is doing here uh, versus the things like you're about to see here. Now I've talked about this a few months ago. Uh, but there was an issue where an MCN on YouTube uh, worked with Microsoft to have the stealth placements of Xbox One uh, put on channels. And what happened was is they uh, had in the terms of their agreement, they could not say anything negative or disparaging about the MCN, uh, which was Machinima, Xbox One, or any of its games. And uh, they must keep the details of the promotional agreement confidential in order to qualify for payment. So not only were they directing people to uh, make a positive statement about the Xbox One in their video, it was gonna be kind of like a placement sort of thing, uh, but they couldn't even say that Xbox paid or Microsoft paid them or Machinima through Microsoft or however the arrangement was made uh, paid them to do that placement and uh, the FTC went after them and fined Machinima uh, for that activity. So that's the kind of stuff that gets you in trouble as a brand if you do this kind of thing and uh, this was the concern that I had uh, in regards to how this whole thing transpired and that's probably the last I'm going to talk about it unless Famebit and Ring want to keep talking about it, I'm happy to but this is the kind of stuff that happens and this is our responsibility as creators and brands uh, that we are uh, reflecting reality and the truth to our viewers and our potential customers uh, so that they all know uh, who's on what page and exactly who's getting paid for what to say what and how. So that's it. Uh, so what can you expect from me after all of this? Well, I mean, I've been very, I hope I've been very clear with people exactly uh, how I perceive sponsorship in relation to this channel. Uh, I am going to, in the course of this whole affair here, uh, think very hard about how I uh, explain things to people when I do have things in for review. I don't want to spend 10 minutes disclosing how the thing got onto the desk here, but I do want to make it clear to uh, both you, the subscribers, as well as people who find my channel through search that uh, this was the arrangement that got this product to my desk 
and how we're going to do it. I am, I'm never going to take money to do a review of a product. That is one thing that I won't do. Uh, I will probably though uh, look at specific features of products, uh, do sponsored content things along the lines of what you saw with that Kingston offer there and a few other things. But um, I think it's going to be very clear, at least on this channel, uh, how I'm being compensated for uh, the particular videos that you see. So you're aware of uh, what goes on here. And the challenge that I have as a creator and all creators have is that we don't have the buffer zones that traditional media used to have. So in a case of a television station or a, or a newspaper, there's a sales department, they make all those deals and arrangements and you just do your thing and there's a wall up. The problem is given the economics of uh, content creation, there is no wall here, I'm it. I'm the host, I am the business operator, the salesperson and the editor and even I take out the trash here too. So I do everything and it's hard to have us uh, an actual separated wall between different departments. And this is the challenge we're going to be facing with media here. And in my discussions with you as subscribers, it appears as though uh, the kinds of things that I've been talking about over the last couple of weeks and to how we're going to be working sponsorship onto the channel has been acceptable. And we're gonna just keep tweaking and adjusting as we go. Uh, but just know that uh, the things that you saw me do in my communication with FameBit in regards to the Ring Doorbell a year ago is still how I'm operating now. And again, your continued feedback and uh, comments on this are great greatly appreciated. So that's going to do it for uh, this update. You heard their side of the story. You heard mine. Uh, hopefully that'll be it for this, but I'm always happy to keep going if need be. So we'll keep talking about this kind of stuff. I hope you found it interesting. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.